Hi guys, welcome to my channel here with me. For those on we here, Karibuni Sana. For those who've never been here before, welcome. So my name is Fiona, but you can call me Fi. And today I am doing a totally different video from what I'm used to. I'm used to walking around here and there. I'm in the kitchen or I'm in the farm or I'm in the garden um, picking fruit or cooking something nice or harvesting something. But today I'm seated, comfortable with my mug over here. We call this one Ndungu. For the Kikuyus in the house, Ndungu means a big mug. Did you know that? I learned that the other day and so we decided to call my mug Ndungu. I love this mug guys and it's huge. It caters for a lot, a lot of tea. So today guys, in the spirit of Christmas, I decided to don this ugly sweater. I don't know why they're called ugly sweaters. Somebody please comment down below and tell me why they're called ugly sweaters. It's really nice. It's warm. And yes, I like how it looks. And also I decided to undo my hair. And yeah, anyway. So guys, my birthday is just around the corner. I turn, drum rolls please. I turn 30 years old on 20th December. So today guys, I want to discuss and to just talk about the lessons that I have learned over the years from experience and from observation. Weh, 30 years is not a joke, guys. There's a lot to be learned. Every day is a learning lesson. Every moment of every day, there's something you to pick up in life. And um, so I'll be, I'll be reading through the lessons. I prepared this prior, by the way, to this video. <laughs> I like to prepare and I like to plan. I'm a huge, huge believer in planning. And, and in executing obviously what has been planned so i hope this video will not be too long but if it is please bear with me in the meantime go gra grab yourself a cup of coffee cup of tea cup of lemonade uh what do you guys drink hmm? whatever it is that you drink go grab it sit down comfortable um, and let's get to this. So I'll divide the lessons into different sections, categories. And um, we first start with money. Yo, guys, the lessons I have learned about money and finances and savings and the economy. Oh, a lot. Through experience and just through observation and just through living. Money is something that rules the world, literally. If you don't have money, man, it's a sad life. To be honest, to be, truth be told, without money, there's really not much you can do. There's really not many places that you can go. There's not much that you can achieve. Money is a good thing, guys. So the first lesson that I have learned in life about money is that we need to live below our means. Eh, guys, don't go competing with billionaires when you're here earning 10,000 Kenya shillings. It's not going to work. Please, guys, live below your means. If you're a salaried person, please intricately and delicately plan your money. If you have your own business, same thing, plan your money. Budget. Budgets are extremely important for the survival of humankind. <laughs> we need to budget, guys. Prioritize your money, guys. From highest priority to lowest priority, then you come to your wants. Food, shelter, and clothing are at the top of the list of priorities for humankind. Meet your basic needs, but don't outdo your. Don't go competing with the rich and famous. That you want to live in in the green suburbs when you can afford to live in a cabbage sitter. Live within your means, guys. Okay, make sure you have a roof over your head. Um, food, good food and um, good clothing please don't walk around in tatters guys you can thrift kama hamna pesa tafadhali thrift mitumba ziko in plenty in kenya we have a lot of second hand um, shops all over wherever it is that you are you will always find second hand clothes but if you can afford brand new clothes fantastic but don't don't live above your means don't usijinyime chakula Atindio ununue nguo ama ununue kiatu. Does that make any sense? Yes. 
ahead. Lesson number two, file your tax returns and pay your debts. Hey, let me tell you guys, the, ta the tax master, he will come to collect. If you have not been paying your taxes, if you have not been, been um, filing your returns, trust, trust. Let me tell you for free, guys. He will come to collect. Not now, maybe not now. Maybe in, when you're in your 50s, your 60s, even your 70s. But trust me, the tax master is going to come and collect. KRA is watching. And for any uh, tax authority that is in the country in which you are watching this video from, they will come to collect. So it's best to file your returns when they need to be filed. Keep your records in order and pay your debts. It is very difficult, I must admit, to live in this economy without borrowing. For sure, guys, it's very difficult. And so when you, um, when you borrow, please, please return the money you have borrowed within the stipulated time. And when you can't return the money you borrowed within the stipulated time, please tell the person you borrowed or the institution you have borrowed from that I will not be able to pay this, this, this amount at such and such time. Give me leeway. Just keep communication open and be very honest about your ability to, to pay the debt, the loan, the debt or the loan when it needs to be paid. And don't go, especially the people you borrowed money from, and don't start talking negatively about them when they come to collect the money that you have borrowed from them. Because remember, even them, they have their own needs. And so when you borrow from them, you have, in a way, in a way and in a sense, taken away the ability to, to budget properly, taken away the ability to invest properly, taken away the ability to meet their own needs. Keep that in mind, guys. Okay. The third lesson is don't hold, don't hold on to material things. They will either, hey, guys, this is a lesson I have learned the hard way. I have seen it with my own two eyes. I have experienced it myself personally. And for material things, you will not have them forever. They will either burn in a fire they will get stolen, they will get repossessed, they will grow old and unusable, they will be given away, they will get lost, or they will get sold. So that car you're holding on to, that car you don't want your wife to drive, that car you don't want your, your, your husband to drive, that piece of necklace that you don't want your daughter to borrow from you, that um, that top that you don't want to, to, to lend to your sister, it will grow old, my friend. If just something happens to material things, they are finite. With time, guys, they lose their value. And um, yeah, that is just how material things are. They are here today and gone tomorrow. Just like this life that we have. So bear in mind that material things are extremely temporary. So hold on to the things that are of value and that are timeless. Okay? Yes. Now guys, let's come to self-care. To me, personally, I think self-care is technically just taking care of this, of your flesh, of your mind, of your heart, of your soul, and of your spirit. Eh? Jitunze, inamanisha kujitunza. Self-care inamanisha, you love yourself enough to, to take care of yourself. And so the first way to have to take care of yourself is by drinking water. Yes, guys, I said it. Drink your water. <laughs> I have a batch that you drink in a day. Increase it just a bit. If you drink one cup, increase it to two cups. If you drink five cups, increase it to six cups. But be, uh, be careful because you can overhydrate your body. So know your limits as well when it comes to drinking water. But drink water, guys. It is very important for you to, to hydrate your life, hydrate your cells, hydrate your skin, hydrate your hair. Water is extremely important for our bodies, for our body to function. And um, yes. Then the second one is... <laughs> this might trigger some people, but hey, it, it is what it is. This is just facts. Smoking, drinking, and illicit, se illicit sex will age you badly yes guys these three things will age you badly these vices i can call them vices because that is what they are they are delicious 
they are delicious to the taste, delicious to the to the body, but in the end they will destroy you. Please let me advise you for free, especially for the younger ones who are now getting a taste of of life, getting a taste of of the pleasures of life. Smoking, drinking alcohol and illicit sex will age you badly and will destroy you. If you want to maintain a uh, a good sense of self please stay away from these three things because i'm a born again christian i will go according to what the bible says i do as the bible says and i believe it 100% and i believe that the bible is infallible the bible says that we need to stay away from sexual immorality sexual immorality is goes hand in hand with illicit sex and sexual immorality includes everything that does not encompass sex within marriage did you get that <laughs> immorality sexual immorality illicit sex is anything done within or without the confines of marriage and even in marriage you can find people uh, participating in illicit sex and sexual immorality but that's a story for another day but so staying away from uh smoking excessive consumption of alcohol and illicit, and illicit sex is part of self care mm. hey another part and something else that i believe is self care is to just go out into nature go out into nature guys go and smell the fresh air go out and see the the the, the blue the blue skies go listen to the birds chirping go and uh, take a walk outside your house outside your compound outside that car plot that you live in outside the estate that you live in go out guys and enjoy the rays of the sun i'm so glad that we live in a country where the sun is out most of the year and so it's warm and it's comfortable for us and it's just it's an amazing atmosphere and climate that we enjoy in Kenya and so you can go out or get out of your house at any given time where it's safe not any given time where it's not safe <laughs> mind your security guys yeah so get out of your house get out of that place you have been confining yourself to and go and smell the fresh air as much as possible if you can leave leave your house and go and smell the fresh air especially for those who are working from home because i know there are many of many of us who work from home please get out and smell the fresh air take a walk hmm? ride a bike if you have one climb your climb a kanduli and go sh- shopping if you can <laughs> ah yeah go out and enjoy uh, fresh air yeah, the next part that I believe is part of self care is go for psychotherapy, guys. Go and 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 uh, and treat what it what is mentally afflicting you. Depression is real. That one I can tell you for a fact. Anxiety is real. Um, evil negative thoughts are real, and they can really deteriorate the 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 quality of your life. And so, as much as you can, please seek help seek mental help if you can afford the services of a psychologist of a psychiatrist of a counselor please do guys please do get yourself mental help if you're drowning in negative thoughts please talk to someone if you can't afford a counselor or a psycho or a psychologist or a psychiatrist please talk to someone even a random person yeah you can go to a bus stop and and pour out your heart to somebody that person you're talking to that random person you're talking to could be the the answer to your prayers they could have a solution to the problems that you have imagine yeah it's very possible a random person that you talk to could be the key that you have been looking for to open the door that you need to be open for so seek mental help guys seek it and seek it before it's too late and a part of some mental help according to me from what i've experienced is talk to god as i said before um i'm a born again christian and i believe in jesus christ i believe in god the father and i believe in the holy spirit and i believe that jesus christ is a prince of peace and he 
God Almighty is our comfort. He's our great comforter. And so we, if you have any problem with your with your health, physical health, mental health, just if your your life is just going helter skelter, talk to the Father in heaven. Pray, guys, pray. For those who don't believe in God, we ma yo imagine he exists. God does exist. God lives, he is alive. The God of the Bible is alive. And he created you, he created me, he created the universe. He's the creator of the universe, of the world. So guys, please pray. Pray, pray, pray. Prayer works. The answer to your prayers may take a longer time than you expect them to come, but eventually they will come. When you persist in prayer, the answers to your prayers will manifest in your lives. And God gives peace. Even in turmoil, even where he, you, you expect yourself to break or to just shrivel and pass away, imagine God will give you the strength to hold on. In prayer, if you ask him for help, if you ask him for strength, for sure, he will come through for you. So pray, that is also part of self-care, according to me. And then, another part of self-care, guys, is visiting a chiropractor. You know that doc the doctor that fixes bones? <laughs> that doctor is important to crack your back, to align your, your shoulders, your neck, your back, even your jaw. Guys, yeah, the chiropractor is extremely important. I did not know this a few years ago, but I got to learn of the importance of a, of a chiropractor. My sister keeps on telling us that the human body also needs servicing just like a car. So from time to time, visit a chiropractor so that you can be aligned. Apparently, you will you'll smell better. Your sense of smell will return and it will be elevated. You will hear better. You will see better. <laughs> Guys, for those who have experience with a chiropractor, please let me know what your experience was. Did you smell better? Did you see better? Did you hear better? Please let me know about your experiences with your chiropractor. The next um, way you can... Um, I have self-care is by brushing your teeth. Take a bath. Guys, order. Muoge, jameli, muoge. For those who like to neglect shower hour, muoge tafadhali. <laughs> and you don't have to use ex expensive soaps, by the way. I came to realize eh, that panga soap does wonders. I don't even know where I've been living. I was so used to these body gels, body shower gel, sorry, shower gels. But panga soap actually does wonders. It leaves you feeling fresh, your, my skin is smooth. I realized that these shower gels, they have a lot of chemicals. The fragrances, they smell really good, but they are a bit strong and a bit harsh for the skin. But panga soap, many of them are scentless and they work well with all types of skins, I believe. So, again, it is not, panga soap is not expensive for those who cannot afford shower gels or just kawaida, your normal type of um, soaps. So, take that piece of panga soap, na muoge, tafadhali, saweni, alafu pia nyele muoshe. Take care of your hair, take care of your skin, take care of your nails, take care of your toes, brush your teeth, brush your tongue. It's extremely important to do all these things. It's part of self-care. If you love your life and want peace of mind, flee sexual immorality. Guard, guard your bodies, guys. Don't let, don't let just anybody take possession of your body. Hmm? For the women, guard, guard miss, miss private parts. Guard her with your life. Don't let just any Tom, Dick, and Harry. Akunini. Nelewa. Munelewa kweli. Yes, please. Um, respect yourself enough to say no. Nope. We uta ni karibia. Nope. We we si wangu. Nope. Imuli wangu si wako. Yep. Guys, run away from sexual immorality. This thing is messy. It is messy. Yani guaranteed you will get a disease guaranteed you might get pregnant 
when you're not ready and when you don't want guaranteed one that this one is the worst of them all the repercussions of sexual immorality is soul ties soul ties are extremely dangerous to have especially with somebody who is just he behave who does not have good character who does not have integrity sexual immorality will will drive you to the grave faster than a car crash hmm? run away run away flee 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 from sexual immorality if that man is not your husband please don't sleep with him if that woman is not your is not your wife please do not sleep with her run away from sexual immorality boy i do not know how 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 i can stress this point enough for you to know just how important and how critical it is to preserve your essence eh once you sleep with somebody you have made a spiritual connection with them you have made a, a, a tie with them that cannot be severed even the bible says that when you sleep with someone you have become one with them so you can imagine if you sleep with 20 people in one year that means you have had 20 soul ties you have 20 soul ties and you have had um you have become one with 20 people that means a piece of you is in all those 20 people and all those 20 people are in you so the demons that they fight will also fight them if they were battling anger if they were battling anxiety if they were if they were battling if if they were or are still battling i don't know uh maybe bitterness imagine you will also begin to battle those those demons that is if you are not battling them before sleeping with that person it's that serious the problem that you have in right now it is highly likely that you inherited them from the people that you have slept with does that make any sense I hope it does because sexual immorality is something that is just taken in vivi fornication adultery sleeping with a, a person that is not your spouse eh hey, guys to jitunze eh to jitunze aya now we get into the next section of the lessons that I have learned and that is relationships in relationships we need to have boundaries and limits for everybody and from ev- for everybody be it a woman or a man your parents your cousins your siblings your workers your co-workers your employees your employers have boundaries and limits don't give yourself don't give up yourself too much and don't um withhold yourself know how much to give and how much to 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 keep to yourself mhm The next one is treasure the people in your life. Treasure your children, your parents, your spouse, your siblings, your friends and your the friends who have become your family. When all is said and done guys, what 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 will remain important and of value is the relationships that you have. When you're sick in hospital, who will come and visit you or who has come to visit you? When you are low on finances, who is that who has come through for you? When you have lost somebody and you're in mourning and you're grieving, who has been there with you? Who has been there for you to show you support? This the names that have come to your mind are those people that you need to keep close, treasure them with everything that you have. Treasure human beings. Don't forget that we have been created in the image of God. and this might be controversial this next point that i want to say might be controversial and i might receive some hate from this but it's okay guys leave other people's spouses alone leave other other people's husbands alone leave other people's wives alone leave them alone hmm? stay out of people's marriages and bedroom affairs respect marriages honor marriages marriages are not something to be played with for those who are in who are married and you're playing around with that marriage that you have hey hey wait wait mm. be warned marriage is holy the foundation of marriage is 
is is in God. He's in God himself. He's the one who founded marriage. And he you know God is an is an all wise God. He knew what he was doing when he brought Adam and Eve together, male and female together. And so marriages are established in the foundation of marriage is is God himself. Whether we like it or not, he is the creator of marriages and he is the think tank behind marriages. Therefore, leave other people's marriages alone. Do not interfere with with marriages. Do not interfere with somebody's with somebody's spouse. And if you're sleeping around with a married man or a married woman, imagine judgment is coming. The Bible says that God will judge the adulterer and that the marriage bed should be left undefiled. So if you're defiling your, your marriage bed, my friend, yeah, imagine just repent, repent right now and do away with that, that, that adultery that you're committing. Do away with all the lovers that you have, all the clandes that you have. Do away with them before it's too late. For the men who are married, who like to chase younger women, your time is coming. Your time to reap what you are sowing right now is coming. And it's going to be really, really ugly for you. For the women who are sleeping around with other men and you're married, imagine your time is coming. You will not be able to run away from God's judgment. It is coming. God judges very harshly adulterers. It's in the Bible. Look it up. And for those who are sleeping around with married people, hey, Hey, don't wait. I fear for you. I fear for you terribly. Run. Leave other people's spouses alone. Mind your own business and respect marriages. Another lesson I have learned about relationships is that you cannot stop a feud between lovers and siblings. Stay out of the, their fight or else they will temporarily stop fighting and turn against you. Have you ever tried to... um? bring two two fighting siblings together have you if you have you will know that it is extremely difficult so guys the next lesson is that we should not cohabit that person you're calling wife or husband can leave and officially tie the knot and you're left there wondering hey you know, cohabiting is not legally binding. It is not a marriage. It looks like a marriage, sounds like a marriage, feels like a marriage, but it is not a marriage. Marriages are legally binding. The certificate, the certificate you sign is legally binding. And don't forget, as I've mentioned, that marriages are established by God. They are God's creation and God's idea. Therefore, when you get married here on earth, it is recognized in heaven. And cohabiting is not recognized in heaven, guys. If you're calling your wife and that person you're living with has not married you, he has not paid bread price or done anything that is anywhere close to looking like a marriage or making you his wife, you're just living with him under his roof or under your roof, Imagine that is not recognized by God. It is not. And don't forget that there is integrity in marriage. There is honor in marriage. Marriages are honored not just on earth but even in heaven. Therefore, if anything should go wrong in a marriage, the heavens will fight for that person. The heavens will fight for that wife. The heavens will fight for that husband. But 